So as Americans, we love to work. One survey even said that 70%, 73% of Americans said that working hard to get ahead in life was very, very important for them, compared to 50% was the median among 44 other nations. So as Americans, we're known by our work. Uh, and in light of that, we're really bad at resting. Uh, a lot of uh, Americans really struggle with sleep. They struggle uh, with anxiety. They struggle with stress. Uh, and I think a lot of that has to do because we prioritize work above rest. But when you look at scriptures, uh, God has a created order and a spiritual mandate that we as believers should follow. When you look at the beginning of Genesis in Genesis chapter 1, uh, you can look at the end of each day of creation. And what God says is it was evening, then it was morning, evening, then morning, evening, then morning. Now, think about this. What do you usually do when it's nighttime? You sleep. What do you usually do when it's daytime? You work. And as Westerners and Americans, we tend to view our days as morning and then evening. So it's kind of, we carry this idea that, hey, we work, and if we work hard enough, then we can rest. But as you see the created order, not only in the beginning of Genesis in creation, but even at the end of creation when God rested on the sixth day, God, even in Exodus, implements a day of Sabbath, a time that we would remember and respond uh, to the Lord in worship by resting our bodies, by resting our minds, by resting our soul. You even get into Leviticus, and, and God makes rules for the fields. He says, you work a field for six days, and you leave that field that seventh year so that it can rest, so that in that next year it can bear the fruit that it needs. So God in his creation has ordered rest, God in his spiritual mandates has ordered rest. So we as New Testament Christians, as New Covenant Christians, ought to be people known by our rest. Think about the kind of apologetic that would give to the world to be a restful person, someone who is content in their life and their relationship with God, content in the work that they were producing, and that they had a life of peace. The world, the world is looking for that. And what apologetic if we can live out this rhythm of rest that God has given us, not only in creation, but also in and the spiritual mandate that he's given us in Sabbath. Now, a Sabbath is not something that is required salvifically, but it is something, a spiritual principle, that we all should consider, that Sabbath rest. So what does that mean? John 15, 5, Jesus uh, says that he is the vine, we are the branches. If we abide in him, he'll abide in us. And apart from him, we can do nothing. But with him, we can bear very much a lot of fruit. That word abide is an interesting word because it literally means no movement. So what Jesus is talking about there, he says, if we want to bear fruit, don't move on from him and he won't move on from us. And if we don't move from him, that's when we will bear fruit. And I would break it down this way, abide. Abide is equal parts rest and work. Resting means I am going to rest in my covenantal relationship with God, that I am his child and there's nothing that can happen that will ever happen to change that. I rest in being a human being, that the fact that I'm a human gives me innate value, so I don't have to go find my value elsewhere. But also in that rest, I also am pruned. That is, in seasons of rest that we, that we are still, that God begins to prune away the sin and the darkness in our life. That's spiritual rest. But there's also work. God hasn't called us to just dwell on truths. He wants our minds to be transformed, but he also wants to send us out as his kingdom representatives. So God wants to put us to work. And so abiding, it, it means rest, but it also means going out as a kingdom representative of God, that I am in this covenantal relationship with God, so I'm his child, but I'm also his ambassador, being sent out in the world to represent him to a lost world. I'm also a human doing. God created you to work. Even in the very beginning of creation, God said, Hey, cultivate the land, work it, and keep it. And we are all designed to work, to move our bodies. And lastly, God wants us to bear fruit. That's a part of work, is that when we rest properly, then we can bear the fruit that God wants to see in our life. Here's the interesting thing. Here's what we battle as a Western. We always think that in order to find rest, we first have to work. So that's what the world says. When you apply for a job, you give a resume, you have to prove yourself. Then you can what? Get relationship with that job. If you're looking for a spouse, you got to prove yourself to that person. Then you get relationship. But what God always does is he calls us into rest first to be his child, 
to receive holiness and righteousness and goodness and, and, and honor and all those things so that we can, one, be sent out to work as his kingdom representative. Ephesians 2 reminds me of this, where you see in the very few first verses that we're dead in sin and we're separated from God. But what does he do in verses 4 through 9? It says, because of the love of God, because of the rich mercy of God, that Christ Jesus comes and makes us his own, that he showers his immeasurable riches and grace and kindness on us. For what? Ephesians 2.10. Because we're his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, or good works in the world. So I want to encourage you to create rhythms of rest in your life by logging, figuring out what does it mean for me to daily rest? Well, calendar those times. Put them in your schedule. I'm going to sleep this many hours. This is what I'm going to do to spiritual rest. This is what I'm going to do to, to, uh, to rest in a, an activity that I enjoy and that gives me life. Figure out what you're going to do on a weekly basis to Sabbath, on a monthly and on a yearly basis, and begin to catalog those times of how you're going to rest and create those rhythms so that you can bear fruit.